they, there is in the scriptures the notion uh, presented to us about fairness. And we know that uh, in, even in little children, there is a, an innate sense of fairness. They know right away when something isn't fair. It's one of their favorite complaints, right, uh, between siblings, is that when they see something isn't fair or they perceive that it's not, uh, right, there, there's a kind of outrage. Now, of course, that gets shaped by our own sinfulness, right, and selfishness. Uh, but I remember one time a friend of mine, their uh, children were uh, quarreling, and the one, uh, the older sibling said, it's not fair because the other sibling won at whatever their little competition, a game or something. And it wasn't that the other one cheated or did anything wrong, it's just that they won, and they didn't like the outcome, and so they said, it's not fair that that one won, uh, which is, of course, not true, right? Uh, and so our sense of fairness very often is tinged by self-interest, right? Tinged by self-interest. Uh, it can happen all the time. Uh, and so, uh, right, in the gospel, or in the first reading, rather, Ezekiel, the Lord says to the people of Israel, right, you're complaining that you say the Lord's way is not fair. And he says, oh, really? Is it really my ways that are not fair, or isn't it your ways that are unfair, right? Because if a virtuous person stops being virtuous and commits iniquity, right? They're going to be judged on that. You can't rely on the past, right? Uh, it's it's the, a relationship that matters with God is the one we're in right now, not the one we had 20 years ago, right? Our relationship with God depends on where we are with him at this moment, right? We know that, uh, right? The, the, our decision about whether we are in union with Christ and in the state of grace to come to Holy Communion it right? doesn't depend on what happened 20 years ago. It depends on where we are at this moment, right, when we approach him. And this is uh, to prepare us, right, for the day when we face judgment. It's not going to matter uh, what we did, uh, right, uh, in our long past. It's where are we when we face the Lord in judgment. And so uh, right, that tension uh, weighs on us a little bit. Uh, and they say it's not fair when somebody who was uh, doing evil things repents and, and uh, turns away from that. And they say, no, that person should be uh, right, held uh, in account. Uh, and so the Lord says, no, if we repent, right, he is forgiving, he is merciful. And so that's what he asks from us. Uh, another uh, example, uh, I remember of an adult friend of mine who... Uh, was sort of confused by, I think, the same issue. And he, w he was sort of uh, upset at the Catholic Church because we have the sacrament of reconciliation, right? He said, well, these people can do, go do anything they want and then uh, go to confession and everything's fine. And the answer to that is yes, if they're repentant, right? Of course, if they're not repentant, no. Uh, but he was sort of outraged by the fact that, right, that there was, for uh, there was forgiveness available for people who had done bad things in the past. Right? He wanted to see uh, vengeance instead. And so the Lord's way are not, is not our way. The fact is, if we are repentant, it's not that nobody pays that debt. The fact is, it's absolutely fair because that debt has been more than paid. Right? Jesus Christ suffered and died for my sins and your sins. So that debt has been paid. But in order to benefit from that, uh, God asks a few things of us. One, that we, uh, that we recognize our sinfulness, that we repent of it, right? That we turn our hearts away from, uh, from sin, right? That we truly repent of it, that we're sorry for it, that uh, it is our true uh, desire not to uh, sin again. When we have that kind of uh, experience, right, of repenting of sin, and, and desiring not to do it again in our life, doing penance for that sin, God is unbelievably merciful and generous, right, with his forgiveness. But as I say, he does require something of us. And so it's not uh, God's ways that are unfair, right? He paid the price. He can dole out forgiveness. Uh, the fact is it is our ways that are unfair because we want to hang on uh, to our memory of somebody else's sins and we don't want to forgive 
and so it makes us mad if God forgives, right? Uh, and on the other hand, uh, we imagine that things we did in the past, right, uh, are always going to pay dividends in the future no matter what we do in the present. And God says, no, uh, I, want you, I want your heart, right? I don't want your past, uh, you know, the things you did in the past. I want your heart in the here and now. And so, uh, right, this is something that our Lord talks about then in, in the gospel today. Uh, the people who uh, pay lip service, right? Uh, and he's talking here to the chief priests and the elders. He tells this parable of the two sons, right? One pays lip service. The father says, son, go work in my vineyard. Yes, sir. And doesn't go, right? Doesn't do the will of his father. The other, right, who at first says no, shows, uh, right, that he's not willing, but then repents of that. Right, turns his heart to his father's will and does his father's will. And Jesus says, that's the one right, uh, who is worthy of a reward. And he warns them that they're paying lip service, uh, right? They, they talk a good game, but their hearts are not with God. And he says the evidence of that is that when you saw people turning away from sin because of the preaching of John the Baptist, right, you still wouldn't believe in him. That was uh, what our Lord was uh, critiquing them about, right? They saw the evidence of people repenting and turning their lives around, and they still wouldn't believe in John the Baptist, right? Uh, and so he says that is what uh, is going to be, you know, your judgment, that you saw that happening, and now those people are entering the kingdom of God before you, Right? And he's anticipating that their reply to that is, that's not fair, right? Uh, and he's saying, yes, it is, right? God's ways are above our ways. And God's ways are perfectly just and perfectly good. It's our ways that are unfair. And so uh, we take all of these things together uh, today to pray, right, that the Lord will give us the grace to repent of past sins, Right, to be with him today. Right, if there's some uh, things standing in the way of our relationship with God, uh, maybe even the times when we have rejected him in the past, the Lord is saying, okay, be like that uh, brother who said, uh, in the past said no, but today has repented and turned away and said yes and done the Father's will. Let's be uh, of that heart, right, of the ones who, uh, who are striving uh, despite whatever things uh, lurked in the past, repenting of those things and striving for union with God today. And he gives us this beautiful opportunity at Mass uh, to repent of our sins, uh, to hear the word of God, turn our hearts to the Father, and unite ourselves with the Son.